We're revisiting McCall's 8067. Hello and welcome. I'm Akram Tagaby Birth, and you're watching Akram's Ideas, bringing creative and crazy ideas to life. In this episode, we are revisiting McCall's 8067, which is a simple, loose-fitting, button-down blouse, which I have here. Now, if you recall, a while back, I actually made three variations of this top in efforts to nail the fit, and I still was not very successful. So, this episode, I'm kind of revisiting that, and I think, I think, I finally figured out some of the issues. So, let's get into um, the whole process, what I've learned, and sort of recap from the original shirts that I made. When I made my first version, my very first version of McCall's 8067, I chose to cut a size 16. Now, my full bust currently measures at 42, and my high bust is a 39. So, I used a high bust measurement. There is no 39 on the pattern. I could have gone to an 18, which was a 40, but I decided to go to the 16, which was a 38, because the finished garment measurements was 43 inches on the size 16, and that gave me about an inch around the bust, and I didn't want this to be too incredibly loose, so I just wanted it kind of loose around the waist, but nicely fitted around the bust area. So I went with the size 16, and it fit sort of. So my major issues that I was having is that it was all so big, so big around the collar, and it was very tight if I tried to move my arms. So I went back to the drawing board and I made two variations of that version. I narrowed the shoulders just by coming in to the pattern and basically I made like a size 12 shoulder. I didn't have a size 12 pattern, but I measured in the um, offset of the different sizes to determine how much I would have brought in if I had made a size 12 shoulder length. And then I went ahead and cut the size 14 for the collar pieces and the neckline. And that fixed the huge neckline problems and it feeling like it was off my shoulders. So the fit was much better at that point. The biggest issue I was having is the shoulder problems in the back. So so anytime I lifted my arms, there was a lot of pull in my back, and I felt like I was going to rip the blouse. Now, ideally, I would like to be able to move around in this blouse and clean or move things, and I, I do a lot of things. So, you know, I wanted some more room there. And that leads me to this blouse. So this is where I wanted to really get the fit down. This is a very basic bodice. It doesn't have any darts or anything. The construction's really simple. So I thought in my head, if I could get the fitting for this blouse down, I could be able to fit more complex things, or at least attempt. So let me just share with you the number of iterations that I went through to get to this point. This is all the many variations um, of patterns that did not work for me in order to make this flap. So I made at least four muslins before I ended up with this wearable muslin that I'm wearing now. And basically I was very confused because I would make one and I would post a picture and, like, I wouldn't know exactly what's wrong with the picture. Like, I wouldn't know. Like, something's pulling, but I don't know what it was. Some people said I needed a broad back adjustment. Some people said I needed a sway back adjustment. Some people said the bust was too tight. Oh, there were so many things that I just couldn't get my head around. 
The actual process of doing a full bust adjustment, a broad back adjustment, a narrow shoulder adjustment, like the process of doing that, I totally understand. I can cut up a pattern, I can reset it, I can do all that, but I couldn't figure out which one was causing my problems and I couldn't figure out which one I needed to do first. So in the end, the biggest thing that helped me um, get to the point where I am now was to measure myself front and back separately. So this is something that Joy Mahoy, um, she's got several fitting books and I believe she also had like a crafty blueprint course as well, has said in a lot of her books is to measure the front and the back separately, not the whole thing. And this is where I found a lot of issues. Now, Typically what happens if you have like a full bust through your waist or whatever, it's divided in half. The back bodice has the same amount as the front bodice. And that is not actually ideal, especially if you've got sway back issues or a broad back like me. Now, the second biggest thing is that I was measuring myself standing up straight, but you don't really stand up straight all day long. And especially when you're lifting your arms, your back tends to uh, roll. So if I was standing up straight and I measured my upper back around the shoulders all the way across, I was getting between 18 and 19 inches, give or take. And what was happening is that I measured the pattern and that was right, but that didn't seem right because I knew it was tight. So then one eureka moment i was like what if i bend and i measured myself a second time so i was kind of stooped over like this and i measured myself across my back there so i wish my husband's help obviously because it's kind of hard to do and i was getting 21. i was getting 21 inches versus the 18. i was like two or three inches more so that is the measurement that i decided to go with for the upper back However, however, my back waist measurement was far less than that. Um, I was getting a sort of a straight 18 around the back waist measurement. Now, I, currently I have a 40 inch waist and if you divide that in half, that's like 20 inches on both sides, but I was getting much less on the back when I did the back measurement. So what was happening is because of the fuller tummy, um, there was pulling on the side seams to try to lift over the tummy and then I was getting kind of pulling in the back where I didn't need as much. So I ended up. To see more episodes like this, be sure to click the like button, subscribe to Akram's Ideas, and hit the bell icon to get notified of new episodes. Doing a sort of broad back adjustment in the upper back, just to about this point. So I cut the pattern and shifted it over. And that seemed to work and keep keeping the back bottom pieces um, where it was still at the 18 so that I didn't add anything extra in the center. Now, another thing that I learned from my earlier adjustments is that I did need a rounded back adjustment and I was kind of unsure how much to add. So originally I added a half an inch to the rounded back adjustment and it seemed to work, but then in this version I added one inch and I'm not sure at what stage in the process I thought that that was a good idea, um, but that turned out, you can't really notice it in this version, but I think there is too much of the rounded back and I've got a couple more variations that I'm going to show you and you can see um, some of the issues that I ran into with. Now, when I made this version, I did cut the size 12 shoulder lengths and the size 16 front pieces and did those back adjustments. Unfortunately, I had forgotten that I had changed the collar sizes and the neckline and I did the size 16 collar and neckline on this one. So uh, while the shoulders fit really well and it's not like drooping, I feel like the collar is a little big on this one um, and not so much the collar pieces as it is the neckline. It's a little low and a little wide for me. But I made some more alterations and I made the next one. 
Now, this is the second one of the second round of 80s, 67s that I made. And um, I should say one of the other adjustments that I made very early on was I changed the size of the sleeve and armhole. The arms were much too tight and I had to go up several sizes to get the right size armhole and sleeve. And um, again, I went through variation iterations of doing that until I got the right size. So on this variation, you can tell it looks a little bit different and that's simply because I decided to go with the long sleeve version. Up until now, I've been making the short sleeve version and I just wanted to try something different. Um, I also added the little uh, pocket flat, a uh, little breast pockets on both sides. They kind of disappear in this print so you can't really even tell that they're there and I wasn't really sure if I was going to like them. So I thought in this version it looks really nice. Uh, this is a brush cotton. So I've been using kind of very lightweight cottons, um, quilting cottons and a couple of cotton type lawn type fabrics but this one was a little bit more heavier weight and I thought this would be a good transition to the autumn as we're getting closer to that time and I wanted to try out the long sleeve version so I made this version after a fairly successful version with the wearable muslin that I had on and this version worked out really really well except for a few minor issues first off i did go back and change the neckline so this is the size 12 neckline and the size 12 collar and at this point mccall's had a um was it Hobby Lobby or Joanne's? It was either Hobby Lobby or Joanne's had a $1.99 McCall sale. So I went to the store and ended up buying the smaller size range of this pattern just so I could ensure that I was getting the right neckline size, shoulder size, and collar size for the size 12, which again is two sizes smaller than I usually make, which is a size 16, which is also two sizes smaller than what the pattern measurement says I should be making, which is approximately a size 20. So it's all kind of weird. Anywho, I made this version, and again, I made the same bra back adjustments. Um, I, it's about a one inch on one side of the bodice so two inches across the whole back i guess you could say um for the broad back adjustment and then i again use the sm smaller waist size in the back than the front increasing i don't think i increased any of the waist sizes actually in the front bodice in fact i don't think i really changed the front bodice much at all um versus just making the size 16. a lot of the changes that i made was in the back bodice. The other, other thing, obviously, is because I did the round me back adjustment, there is a back seam in these uh, blouses, which is not to the original pattern. And I'm okay with that if I'm getting a better fit, especially in a pretty print like this, you never notice. Now, I did say before, at some point during my variations i attempted to add a one inch rounded back adjustment and you can't really notice it in the first version that i was wearing because it's kind of a lighter weight cotton but you can definitely see i think you can see a little bit of a lump right here and i think that is because one this is a thicker fabric and two I have too much of a rounded back adjustment. And so basically I went back and decided I really only need the half inch. Of course with the rounded back adjustment typically you need to do a forward shoulder adjustment and I have also uh, done that on these just a quarter of an inch just to make sure that the seam was coming forward again. The only issue that I have with this shirt um, aside from the little lump in the back because I did too much of a rounded back adjustment. The only other issue is because I extended inside the sleeve and stuff, I did the larger sleeve and I did the larger cuff size and it is way too big. I mean, it fits, but I feel like the sleeve is a little big on my wrist. So I probably should have gone down some for the wrist size to get a snugger fit here. Um, because otherwise this cuff isn't really doing anything. It's just really loose. So I, again, would go down 
um, at least a size. Because I think in the end, the sleeve was like a size 20 or something like that, that I ended up cutting for the cuff. Or maybe it was a size 16. I don't remember, but I had to cut a smaller sleeve. And that's the interesting thing, is that once I make all these adjustments, the pattern pieces don't line up to any specific size on the grid. So it was really weird because like the upper back measures at like a size 18, but then as it comes down, it measures back up with the size 16 or something weird like that. And again, it all is kind of arbitrary unless you're really measuring those pieces. So after making this and realizing the rounded back was a little too much and that I really needed to redo the cuffs on these, I decided to make one more variation of this top. And here is my last version of this top, at least for now, and this is the best fit by far. So basically, like I said, if I turn around here, um, I took out the half, the one inch and only did a half inch, uh, rounded back adjustment. And then I did the one inch broad back adjustment just on this upper side and then brought it back in. And as you can see, I've got lots of room. I don't feel like the shirt is going to tear or rip on me as I move around. Um, I made it in this lovely little pink cotton lawn plaid color pinky plaid color with um some pink buttons i added to it and um again the front bodice is pretty much the size 16 i did the um size 12 collars of 12 sleeves and um i went ahead and went back to the short sleeves because after making the other one i was like you know what it's just so hot right now i'm not gonna wear anything with long sleeves for a long while so i made the short sleeves again and one of the things that i did on this one is I folded the hem of the sleeve up instead of to the inside so it creates sort of this faux cuff around the outside of the sleeve and I thought that was kind of a fun little look to it. I'm not big on the breast pocket so I didn't add it to this version but I love this version. This fits amazing and let's just say as I was going through the variations, especially before I even got to that wearable muslin, I like went back to the drawing board and tried to remake it. And I had at least three or four that did not work at all. And I was like in tears because I was like, why can't I get this? Why can't I just cut a size and it fit? And it wasn't until I really looked at the individual back and front and that was my issue is that everything is divided equally between your front and back and of course your front and back are not really the same i mean you've got things up here and then if you've got a belly it's not going to add up correctly and so for a long time throughout the month of july i have been really discouraged and sort of lost my sojo in a way i know that a lot of people probably would have said like okay put this project aside and do something different but i'm one of those people that like i won't stop until i get it like i can't start another project because i won't know where i was on this project or i'll get confused and forget where what i was doing and and what was the last thing and though i write it down i'll look at my writings and like what did i heck did i mean by this and so i had to like forge through and continue until i am successful um which is probably a bad trait because it also makes me very very angry and <laughs> upset throughout the process until I get the process down. So it has been quite an experience to get to this point. And once I got to this point, I was like, okay, I kind of understand this fitting thing. I kind of understand what it is I need to be doing. So maybe, just maybe, I could potentially find sort of a fitting shell and fit it to my measurements and then I could potentially make a bodice block that I could use as a reference for any pattern that I wanted to make and make the whole fitting thing a little bit easier. Um, so says I. So about midway through July as I got done with this pattern, that was my plans. It did not go as planned. 
but that story is for a later episode. I do plan to share all the resources as far as books, videos, and tutorials that I use in order to go through my fitting journey here, and I will be sharing that with you in a later episode, as well as the journey through making my bodice block. In the meantime, I'd love to know in the comments below if you've made any fitting adjustments. How, how did it go? What did you learn? Have you made a bodice block? Any thoughts on that? I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Backroom Plays, and thanks for watching. Because six. So my other back, uh, if I measured it, this is the. I don't like that. I'm gonna raise it a little bit. Sure. So, um, let me do that.